Are you working in the Kubernetes space and looking for a way to tie together your monitoring tools like Prometheus and Grafana? Then this video is for you. What's up, everybody? This is Ned Belavance, Ned1313 on Twitter. Today, we're going to be talking about monitoring Kubernetes and enhancing that with Robusta. But first, I want to provide like a little bit of background around me and monitoring. Now, I've been working in some kind of technology realm for over 20 years now. And one of the things that I've always been tasked with and has been a bit of a challenge is the monitoring of resources. The tools have changed and evolved over time, but the challenges have roughly stayed the same. And some of the big challenges that I have to deal with when it comes to monitoring is starting with, what do I even monitor? And in the past, that's been a, a static exercise where you just deploy agents or enter it into some sort of spreadsheet. But more modern solutions take a dynamic approach to discovering those resources. Now, once those resources are discovered, what does healthy even look like? Now, in the past, you'd have to create a baseline for what healthy looks like, but we've done a pretty good job of creating sort of templates of what healthy looks like for different resource types. Then there's how do I investigate when something goes wrong because we've all been in technology long enough to know something always goes wrong. What, what can I do to investigate that problem? What information is given to me by the monitoring solution? And then finally, how do I separate the signal from the noise? Some monitoring tools tend to be extremely noisy and chatty. They'll bury your inbox if you let them. So how do I separate out what's actually relevant and interesting to me, something I need to solve, versus all the chatter that comes out of one of those monitoring solutions? Now, a lot of the solutions out there try to do everything for you, and that usually means they don't do any of it particularly well. What I like about the Kubernetes and Linux approach is that they try to do the same thing by stringing multiple tools together that each do their individual job extremely well. So what are the common monitoring tools that you'll find in the world of Kubernetes? Well, typically you'll find something like Prometheus to collect metrics, Grafana to visualize those metrics, Alert Manager to fire off alerts, and then something to investigate those alerts and provide additional context. Robusta is one possible solution to help provide that additional context. Robusta is both an open source project and the company who created it. Now I want to focus on the open source project first and then we can cover the commercial offering. The, the central goal of Robusta is to take the alerts that are fired off by Alert Manager enhance those alerts with data from Kubernetes, and then produce events that can be sent to some notification system or destination. Out of the box, it includes a set of rules for common issues to watch out for, and you can also create your own rules that are housed in playbooks. For instance, it has an alert for when a pod is crashing. So with that in mind, let's check out what happens when you create a crashing pod in a Kubernetes cluster. Robusta can work with any Kubernetes distribution, but since it's me, I decided to use AKS for the example. The code that you're seeing here in Visual Studio Code will deploy two AKS clusters using Terraform because honestly, what else would I use to do the deployment? And then it will install the latest version of Robusta using Helm. And then I also included a set of directories for different applications you could deploy and tinker with. Now, the command we're going to run is to launch a crashing pod, but I do want to point out two other directories that are in here. One is Acme Fitness, and this is an example 12-factor application written by folks at VMware that you can spin up, and it also includes a load generator on top of it, so you can generate an artificial load and see what happens when Robusta is managing the alerts from that additional load. The other one is the load test directory, and this contains the commands for deploying a basic PHP app on Kubernetes, and then deploying some BusyBox pods that are going to basically create infinite calls out to that PHP application, and you can dynamically scale the number of pods up to, again, create enough load that you start getting errors. So if you wanna play around with Robusta and Kubernetes in general, 
those are some good applications that you can get started with. Now the command that we're gonna run is in the crashing pod directory. And let me open up the command here. Essentially, we're going to run kubectl apply, and we're going to pull a crashing pod from the GitHub link that's provided. So let me pull up the terminal down below. I'm already set up connected to the second of my two AKS clusters. So I will just run the command here. All right, my crash pod has been created, and this pod will just crash every time it runs. We can get the deployment to verify that it's up and running, so I'll paste that in here. And sure enough, it is up and running, but not ready, <laughs> because every time it launches, it crashes. And if we wanted to get the logs for that deployment, we could do that just as easily. So those are all the logs for the deployment, and, well, <laughs> there's a lot of logs. Now. If I didn't know to go into the terminal and check on the status of my pod, I might not know that it's crashing. Fortunately, all the other tooling that's been deployed with this AKS cluster will let me know, and Robusta is part of that tooling. So let's go over to Slack, which I have wired into Robusta, and see what the alert looks like on a Slack channel. So in my Slack, I have a channel called Robusta Dev, and I configured Robusta to send alerts to this destination. And here's one such alert that was generated by the crash pod. So it lets me know there's a crashing pod. It tells me the namespace where it happened and the source, so which cluster it's coming from because Robusta does support multi-cluster. And a little bit more context and information on top of that, as well as the full log. And that log is pretty extensive. We don't need to go through it all now. Now I've also set up the Robusta UI in their SaaS environment. So if I click on the investigate button, that will take me over to their UI where I can view more information about it. So let me go ahead and click on investigate here, and that will spin up the Robusta Cloud Platform and take me directly to that application. Here we go. So this is the app that's giving me some, uh, some agita, a little bit of problem, and now it provides some richer context. It groups the events it has a whole event stream in here of what it's seen. And since there's not a ton, it's just the pod crashing. It just has some information and I can view some additional details in here, including the full logs and I can download the logs if I want them. So just from clicking that investigate, I can get a bunch more information in the UI. Now I can also get a larger view of what's going on in the UI, and that gets into the paid version, or at least the closed source version of Robusta. So let's start at the apps level. I can view the information about the apps that exist in a particular cluster and a particular namespace or across all of my clusters and namespaces. So I can clear out the cluster, clear out the namespace, and now I'm seeing all apps across all of my clusters and namespaces events that have happened in the last hour. And I can save this view as a preset if I wanted to, especially if I'm dialing down to a specific cluster and namespace. That's pretty useful. I can also view a timeline of events. And this is something where you probably would want to bake it down to a particular cluster and namespace to view all the events maybe that have happened in the last 12 hours to get a sense of the overall health <laughs> of your cluster or your apps over a longer timeline, as well as all the events that are grouped down below. So again, it's just providing a richer experience to help you investigate what's going on with a particular set of alerts or a troublesome application that's running in your cluster. Now, you may need to support multiple cluster environments, and especially if you have a situation where you're running a dev cluster and a production cluster, you may wanna keep them as similar as possible. And that's where this interesting comparison option gets into. So I have two clusters, and in each of those clusters, I deployed that Acme application in the default namespace. So what if I wanted to compare to make sure that the two are configured in a very similar way? Well, I can select the mode as namespace. Now I'm comparing two namespaces, and I can select the default namespace in the first cluster, and in the second cluster, and it will give me a comparison of everything that is in the two namespaces. Now, I don't care about what's identical. I care about what's different. So I can toggle this button and see, oh, 
The only difference between the two is that crash pod that I launched on the second cluster. And I can fix that by removing that deployment at some later time. So this is all the useful information, or I won't say all, but this is some of the really useful and additional information that you can get out of the UI. Now, just as a point of clarification, the UI is their SaaS service. It is free for up to 20 nodes, which is plenty for a small cluster. But if you want to go beyond that scale, then you'll need to upgrade to their paid version. Now, if SaaS doesn't work for you, your organization doesn't allow you to use a SaaS offering, then there's also an enterprise option where you can host your own instance of this UI internally if you need to. And that is also a paid feature. But I believe you can start as a trial of up to 20 nodes as well. Now, I mentioned earlier that the open source version of Robusta includes built-in rules, but it's more than just sending an alert with some info. There's a sneaky automation engine under the hood. Okay, it's not that sneaky, but hear me out. The rules are housed in Robusta playbooks, and they're composed of a trigger, an action, and a sync. So the trigger determines when the rule is fired. The actions are the things that should happen, and the sync is where the output of the actions should go. And you can trigger on events from the Kubernetes API server, from Prometheus, from Alert Manager. You can have a scheduled trigger that runs at the same time every day or you know, once a week or whatever you want. And you can also trigger on webhooks. Now that webhooks option means that you can trigger on just about anything, including your own custom events. Now that's the trigger side of things, which is pretty cool. Moving to actions, Robusta comes with a set of built-in actions you can take. It has a whole library of them, but you can also write your own custom actions using Python and have them run as well. The syncs are targets for your output, and there are a ton of possible syncs. You've already seen the Slack integration, and you can also do things like Microsoft Teams, send it to PagerDuty, Jira, and more. And there's also a generic webhook, webhook sync. So really, if your target has any kind of webhook functionality, you can send the sync data there. So what this all means is that the automation engine is ridiculously extensible and customizable. It begins with a bunch of useful defaults, but you can easily add your own trigger, actions, and syncs to make it do what you need it to do. And there's a community of people who are doing exactly that and sharing their work. One fun example that I wanted to share is the opportunity to play with Robusta's implementation of a chat GPT bot. So you can check out the code on GitHub, but essentially it allows you to interact with the chat GPT bot directly from Slack and ask it questions. And then it can also look at the data that's included as part of the alert and provide potentially some solutions to whatever the error is that you're having. Like I said, I'll include a link down in the description for this particular uh, experiment that Robusta has put together. I barely scratched the surface on Robusta, but my main takeaway is that it's a solid tool that serves a limited purpose really well. And that's what I want out of my tooling, honestly. At its core, it's a rule processing engine that loves Kubernetes. It takes what Prometheus collects and info from Grafana and alerts from Alert Manager and makes that information more useful to the poor ops folks who have to deal with it. Now, having been one of those poor ops folks in the past, more than once, I appreciate the added context to the alerts. I also appreciate that the automation component is open source and extensible without using some arcane language I've never heard of or needing to compile binaries in Visual Studio. If you happen to know a little bit of Python, you're good to go. Now, of course, I don't actually know Python all that well, so I'd love to see a low-code, no-code alternative for the playbook creation. I'd also love to see some integration with the application level of pods that have been instrumented with something like OpenTelemetry. Now, maybe that already exists and I haven't seen it yet, or maybe that's beyond what Robusta wants to focus on, and I do appreciate focus. 
Thanks to Robusta for sponsoring this video, and thanks to you for watching. If you think I've earned it, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I post new videos. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Code from the video is available on GitHub, which is also linked below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. All right, so I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I recorded this over two days, but I wore the same shirt both days so you wouldn't know. Can you tell the difference between what was recorded on day one and day two? I bet you can't. All right, bye.